What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Guys, this has been like the best Copart walk around experience I think I have ever had. Although there is a serious shortage of cars, the weather is perfect. I'm not drenched in sweat. I'm not drenched in pouring rain. It's actually a beautiful day out here in Dell City. So we're back, of course, at Copart, 2829 Southeast 15th Street here in Dell City, Oklahoma. You guys need to come check this place out, man, because I'm telling you, even though there may not be a lot of room for or profit uh, for a wholesale dealer like myself, I'm telling you, for somebody looking for a good vehicle for themselves or for family, man, this place is it. You gotta check it. Don't let a salvage brand scare you. And remember, hold on, don't tell anybody I told you this, all right? But not all cars at Copart are salvaged. They have a lot that are donations. Don't tell anybody. I don't want them to kick me out for letting you guys know. I'm just kidding. We're gonna jump right into this today, guys, with a, what is this old, where's where's Monkey Wrench Mike? Monkey Wrench Mike, where you at, man? Somebody tag Monkey Wrench on this one. I don't think he'd have any interest in this. So this is a 79 SL450, an SL450. I've never heard of an SL450 before, but I've also never claimed to be an expert on all things car related. Yeah, I just wanna make sure I read that right. SL450 says inoperable key. Now, I think Monkey Wrench Mike and I have looked at some of these similar types of Mercedes before, and he told me, if I remember correctly, that this top actually comes off. And if I remember correctly, does it come off? I could be wrong. No, I think it does. It's got a seal here. I do believe it actually does come off. He also told me the seals tend to leak like crazy and it ruins the car, ruins the dashboard, just completely destroys the car. However, this particular car looks like it's in relatively good shape. Unfortunately, the key, it says, doesn't work. That doesn't mean we can't try it out. Oh, oh, wow. Whoa, trying to cut my leg off here, man. Oh, whew. Uh, <laughs> it's got that, it's got that old Mercedes smell. Well, here's a key of sorts, and it it works. Yeah, it works. The key does work. Guys, guys, <laughs> I'm going to try to start it. I'm going to try to start. So it says inoperable key, but the key works on this. So obviously with an inoperable key, this thing's not going to be a run and drive. Well, if I can figure out... God, I wish Monkey Wrench Mike was here. Oh, where's that Monkey Wrench Mike at? How do you open the damn hood on this old girl, man? Is there a, a lever? Is there a lever up under here somewhere? I don't see a lever. Hmm. I don't really, I don't really see anything for that matter to help me figure out how to open the hood. Did I miss a hood release in here somewhere? I'll bet some of you that know this car are sitting there going, no, Randy, the hood release is right there. You're missing it. It's right in front of you. Oh, is it over here? Ah, okay. Found it, I did. Most of you will not get that reference. That's okay. All right. Now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we figured out the first part. Uh, how do you open it from here? That they don't make it easy on you, man. So, I mean, I can see the hood latch. It's right here. <sighs> okay, guys, as embarrassing as this is, I, oh wait, no. <laughs> Did they hide it over here somewhere? I'll be right back. I found it. You have to reach through the Mercedes star and right here. Okay, so if any of you, I doubt it'll ever happen, but if you find yourself in a place where you need to open the hood and you can't figure it out, well, maybe I just save you a little bit of time. Now, what I just did did not seem to help me at all because I was assuming there would be a nice big battery under the hood uh, that I would be able to put my booster pack on. And 
unfortunately there's no battery so i'm assuming the battery must be in the trunk and hopefully it's a push button yes can we get into the trunk oh it seemed like it wanted to open see see the trunk there it goes there it goes okay now we're cooking with grease there's where the battery goes all right let me hook a jump starter up to it or a booster pack and let's see if we can get this thing to do something all right trusty booster pack is installed don't think for a minute that i expect it to fire up i i don't it's probably been sitting for 20 years it probably has no gas i heard the cd player make noise that's a sign fuel gauge is bouncing around it may not even have any gas in it I hear a tap or a knock yeah she's not gonna start I'll try it one more time but the good news is this was listed as not doing anything like the key was inoperable and as you can see The key absolutely works. I'm gonna leave it there, leave it at that. I didn't expect it to run at all. I just wanted to know if the engine cranked over. As long as the engine cranks over and doesn't make any funny noises, I feel comfortable that bidding on it could be a lot of fun. Unfortunately, the engine makes noise. I don't know if you could hear the tapping or the knocking coming from it when you were cranking it, but I can assure you that once it actually fires up and is running, whatever that noise is, is going to get exponentially worse. So, although I think this is a really cool car and it looks good, it needs a little bit of work, but you know, I don't think it needs anything too major, probably a good fuel system cleaning, fresh gasoline. Being that it's a Mercedes though, it probably has that weird, uh, fuel injection that old school fuel injection system that is you know complicated and expensive to fix and with the engine making noise i'm gonna say this one is not for me next on my list is a beautiful 2020 bmw x3 it's got m sport wheels it is a flood and not running so being that it's a 2020 and it's sitting here obviously something went terribly wrong now it was taped up you can see but it looks like somebody has already cut it wanted to make sure you guys could see it was not me i didn't do it oh yeah she's oh wow okay this door does not operate uh <laughs> well for a minute i was thinking you know hey maybe we could crank it over and see if it does anything no no that ain't gonna happen this thing ain't gonna crank, I guarantee you that. This, the water in this thing was high. I mean, there's there's mud on the seats, guys. Look at this, there's literally mud in the seat belts, mud caked down here, mud all the way up here. And I think, I'm trying to see a water line. I don't see the water line. This car is just, it's so full of mud, it's really hard to see how high the water actually got. I could tell you this, the water got over the vents because I can see pine needles and dirt and debris literally inside of the vents. So, wow. Wow. I think this whole thing, uh, is it still closed on this side? Oh yeah, you can see the water in the headlights, the condensation. Guys, literally, this car was underwater. I didn't even realize it was that bad. Like from the pictures, you couldn't tell it was that bad. It's very bizarre though, because you would think inside of these cup holders and stuff would be like really, really bad. And I do see some signs that water was in them, but I just would expect it to look a whole lot worse. There's water literally dripping out of the door right now. What about the screen? Can we see water behind the screen? I don't know, man. I don't know. Good night. 
makes you wonder how that happened. You know, it's not like it ran off a bridge or something. Oh, whoa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was, she was submerged. She was completely submerged underwater. Look, you can even see the dirt and mud behind the headlight lens. Wow. So this whole car was underwater. That's rare to see, guys. That's rare to see. Look at all the, the debris, the chips of wood, the chunks, everything on top of the cowling, pieces of trees. Oh, it's too bad there's no dipstick. I would love to see what the oil looks like on this. I, I, I guarantee when the insurance company got a hold of this car, they sent it immediately. They were like, nah, nah, we're, no, <laughs> just move on. It's done. There is no possible chance of saving this. Yeah, I would love to check the oil. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and pull the, not the dipstick. I don't think they come with dipsticks anymore, but no, maybe not. I was thinking this thing might be full to the brim with oil. It's actually not. Hell, you might put a jump on this. She may run. I'm absolutely kidding. There's no way in hell this thing is going to run. What a find, though. What a find. And hey, you know what? It actually may run, guys. And you know why? I think water may be about the same viscosity as the oil this thing requires. Zero weight 20? Isn't that about what water is anyway? Hey, she may run just fine with water in the crankcase. Oh, this would be fun to mess around with, guys. But truthfully, obviously, it's a BMW. The whole car was underwater. Uh, it ain't going to run. It ain't going to drive. And even if you could get it to try to start, nothing in here is going to work. At least, that would be my guess. I guess you really don't know until you uh, put the key in it, put some power to it, and try it out. But you want to know something? This is one car we ain't trying it with. We're moving on to the next one. Next on my list, a 2013 Chevy Impala. At first glance in the listing, I thought, hey, yeah, this actually looks pretty good. 148,000 miles, not too bad. You know, it's worth taking a peek at. But this is why I always tell you guys, don't bid sight unseen. Come out here and look at the cars for yourself. It's got some dings and dents. That's a very interesting ding. Uh... Something hit it, obviously, through the taillight, so this has had to have been replaced, and it actually wrinkled the metal there. Um, This side taillight is busted out. It's got some weird Chrysler wheel over here. Okay, very interesting. Chrysler wheel right there, and I think the rest are actually Chevy Impala wheels. The fender is smashed, not a big deal. These are a dime a dozen, easy to find, and easy to find in the same color, too. Plenty parts cars out there. Oh my God. Are you serious right now? Are you serious? This is one of the worst I have ever ever seen ever good night how do you how do you <laughs> i guess that's all i can say how do you how oh my god there's mold oh hell no you let your kids sit back here with crowns and color all over your car and markers, are you serious? Let me tell you something, guys. Look at this, that's mold. That is mold and mildew and markers everywhere. Look at this floor. Mountain Dew in the back, food. This is disgusting. This is disgusting. I mean, absolutely disgusting. There is no excuse for that, guys. None. Absolutely no excuse. Let me tell you something. I'm going I'm to go on a very short tangent right now. But this, this right here, this is what's wrong with a lot of kids in today's society. This is what's wrong with a lot of these youngsters that's going to be growing up and running this damn country. All right? It's stuff like this. Parents, let me tell you something, man. I, I'm... This pisses me off, and this isn't my car. They ain't my kids. I don't even know these people. But whoever owned this car and let their kids do this, bad parenting. 
You, I can tell you right now by looking at the car, you're a bad parent. Bad parent. All right. If you let your kids color all over your car and tear up your car and make a hot mess of it like this, you let your kids destroy your property like this, this means you let your kids run wild. You let your kids just do whatever the hell they want. I'm telling you right now, guys, I'm kind of old school. You know, I was parenting long ago. Things were a little different than they are today. You could spank your kids back in the day. Let me tell you something. All my kids got spanked. All my kids got spanked back in the day. This, this didn't happen in my house. This didn't happen in my car. Okay, I'm lying. The, my kids did occasionally color on a wall, but you got spanked for it. And then you had to clean it up yourself. You were made to clean it up. You were punished and you were made to clean it up. You had to learn. I had to teach my kids there are consequences for your actions. You let your kids run wild and rampant and do things like this. They think as they get older that they're entitled to act like this, that they have a right to exhibit this type of behavior, not just on your property, not just on their property, but on other people's property too. They think it's okay. You can't do this, man. You can't do this. This is awful. Absolutely awful. Now, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm walking away from this one. I can't even look at this one anymore. Guys, I don't know what just came over me, but I couldn't help. I, 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 I gotta hear if it runs. I, I don't know why. It says it didn't run. It says it had no key, but it's got a key in it. So I'm sitting here like, well, <laughs> oh my God, man. Maybe, maybe. Hey, we could give this to the Auto Spot LLC. Nope. Wow, something is real wrong with this. Oh, that's a yellow jacket? Is that a yellow jacket? What the hell is that? Whoa. I think that's a yellow jacket, guys. Whoa. Yo, man, I'm not even playing. I've already, I'm covered in poison ivy right now, man, all over. I'm highly allergic to poison ivy and I'm highly allergic to bees and wasps. He flew out. <sighs> See, bad omen with this car. This car is done. Yeah. All right, well, I had to know. Probably just finished killing off my booster pack. Now we know she literally is dead as a doornail. Next, I got a 95 GMC Sierra. Says it was a donation. 153,000 miles on the odometer. The tires look old and rotten with no tread. The body, somebody tried to, f wow. Someone must have put hours in on this. So all the paint was gone here, right? All the paint was gone here. Somebody literally took the time to try to fill in every single dot of missing paint all the way down this entire body. I mean, someone must have spent a ridiculous, they did it on this side too, wow. I mean, someone must have spent an insane amount of time filling all of that in, that's wild. That's wild. Let's take a look. It's listed as a run and drive. These actually sell. They really do. These sell very well. Of course, it needs a set of tires. Uh, it could stand a coat of paint. I think with a fresh, with the body itself and the interior, very good shape. Even the bed is in really good shape. I think with a fresh paint job, this truck could actually be worth some money. Fresh paint job, a set of tires. Thankfully, the interior is in really good shape. Normally, the interiors are trash on these, but the interior is really good. It's really nice. Back seat looks good too. It's got the factory GM floor mats. Those are actually worth a little money. Uh, you can't find those hardly anymore. Oh, but does she run? Yes, she does. 153,000 miles, that's nothing for these. Nothing for these at all. I'm telling you, with a paint job, a set of tires, if the AC works and if it runs and dries as good as I think it does, 
This truck is a $3,500 truck all day long. Oh, it's a V6 though. Oh man. Well, I'm not sure it's a $3,500 truck anymore. <laughs> oh crap. Yeah, it's the V6. And the air conditioning is not working. Well, dang. And unless it's been retro retrofitted, I'm pretty sure that 95 was still R12, was it not? I could be wrong. Let's see if we can find a, uh, a label on here that tells us. I don't really see anything. Uh, it's got a, the, okay, so the, uh, the compressor has been replaced. It says manufactured by Four Seasons. I'm pretty sure that is not a factory AC compressor. Normally though, you'd see a little sticker somewhere that would tell you, you know, it holds like so many, oh, right here. It's not a sticker. So somebody replaced the, uh, is this the evaporator or the dryer? Anyway, it says two pounds on it. So apparently that's been replaced. So it looks like it is R134. Looks like somebody went through the trouble of replacing everything. So it might work with a shot of Freon. I don't know, but being a uh, being a 4.3 liter though, you know, that's it runs perfect. It does. I, I'll bet. I mean, look at this, guys. I don't think you get 35 out of it though. I don't, I don't think you could pull 35 out of it, even if it's got no issues. Let's turn this down. In fact, let's turn it off. There are no warning lights on the dash at all. Nothing. Uh, the brakes are very weak. Oh no, they're not. I'm just used to my newer cars. Brakes actually feel decent. Oil pressure is good. Does the radio work? Factory radio works. Headliner looks good. Do the windows work? Yes. Yes. Power locks? Yep. Okay, so this is a truck, guys, that literally everything works on you know what i didn't see is a check engine light you know there it is service engine soon light it works gauges battery light airbag light everything works abs light all the lights function and it has no uh it has no warning lights on what do you guys think Give it a little throttle. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the hood one more time because I, I actually am interested in this. My concern now that it runs so well and it looks so good, my only real concern is possibly the transmission. And these were kind of notorious for transmission failures but uh i'm telling you man she went right into gear just fine but that doesn't mean anything like it, okay it can have drive and it can have reverse but uh it may not have second gear may not have third gear it's hard to say it's worth taking a peek at the trans fluid actually that's that's a good sign the trans fluid is not dark it's not horribly burnt but it's not bright pink either it's a little on the, it's turning brown. It's turning from pink to brown. So it's decent used fluid that makes me think transmission might just be okay after all. This might be a legit good running driving truck, guys. I'm keeping this on my list, but knowing the way things have been going lately with cars, trucks especially are running high. So, uh, We'll keep our eye on it. It's something I'll definitely take into consideration. Hell, if we could get it cheap enough, 
could probably just sell the damn thing like it is. Well, I guess we'd have to put some tires on it. Yeah, definitely have to put some tires on it, but I don't think the paint is so horrible that it would really justify getting it a total paint job. I don't know, comment below. Tell me what you think of the 95 GMC 1500. Last on my list, guys, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm recording this because to me, it's really interesting. This is a 98 Range Rover, but man, does it look outdated. Like even for 98, to me, this looks really, really outdated. Think about the cars that were coming out in 98, you know, the mainstream cars, the Ford Taurus, all right, the Chevy Cavalier, the, uh, what other family cars, the Chevy Impala, all right, a 98 Impala. Just think of all the, the cars that were coming out in 99. I'm trying to think of some Dodges, guys, but honestly, uh, they're, they're kind of fleeting my, my memory at the moment. But I think about maybe a, a Dodge Stratus, or sorry, not a Dodge Stratus, a Dodge Intrepid, a Dodge Intrepid, a Chrysler Concord from the same era. You think of the American cars and hell, even look at the BMWs, okay? BMW, Mercedes in the, the late 90s, they were really, really aerodynamic looking. Not a Range Rover. Not a Range Rover, man. <laughs> 1998, Range Rover said, you know what we're going to do to make this thing look more modern? We're going to make the headlights more modern. And that's it. The rest of this damn thing looks like it's straight out of the 80s, man. Wow. You could tell she has not moved on her own in quite some time. That tire is completely disintegrated. It looks as if the rotors could possibly be rusted to the calipers, maybe. She's, she's rough, man. Sad, too. Oh, oh man. Wow. Takes some work to open those doors. Beautiful interior though. Absolutely well. Okay, the back interior looks decent. You get up front and unfortunately uh, the rest of it is just, it's shot. It's sad. Oh, well, okay. All right, she doesn't want us to open the driver's door. That's fine. That's fine. Can we open this? Nope, can't open that neither. I guess we'll just have to settle for, oh. Are you kidding me? It's unlocked. You, you can't get in it. You can't get in it. And that makes me wonder, is this really a non-runner? Or if you put a booster pack in it, would she fire up? Hmm. Should I try to climb in and climb over to try to pop the hood? Maybe, hold on, maybe I can just reach in here and maybe I can grab uh, oh crap okay there we go Whew. it's more than one way to skin a cat oh hey in 98 they had airbags too how about that golly look at this this is just this is awful it's bad it's real bad let's see if we can Get the hood open up for us here. Oh man. Ugh. This thing weighs like a thousand pounds. So the hood struts are totally shot. And somebody had this ingenious idea to use this pole. This pole fits perfectly down here and perfectly up here. Land Rover 4.0 liter. I'll tell you, uh oh, no battery. That's a sure sign something is very wrong. You know what I mean? Anytime you open the hood of the car and whoever owned it last took the battery out of it, that was like they wanted every last dime they could get back out of it, so much so that they stole the damn battery out of their own car. Yeah, well, interesting. This is a 4.0 liter V8. When I see 4.0, I'm thinking of like Ford and I'm thinking of V6. No, 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 this is a, this is a, teeny tiny v8 it's it's cute <laughs> it's actually i this thing is big it's heavy i just can't imagine a little 4.0 v8 dragging this sucker around uh she smells funky as hell guys boy she smells real funky 
I would, I really would make an attempt to fire this bad boy up, but, oh man, literally this hood, this hood feels like it weighs at least 80 to 100 pounds. The, the weight of that hood is insane. What are the miles? No miles. It had digital odometer. How about that? Does it have a key? It does have a key. Damn. This makes me really want to try to crank it. it it's listed as a non-runner. I do, I do wonder, did they, uh, did they even try or did they just look at this and go, man, no way. No way. Uh, I'm going to guess that this one probably honestly doesn't run. Um, she's rough. She's real rough. And I would love to try to start it for you guys just to at least hear it crank. Unfortunately, my booster pack died when we were fighting that Impala. Trying to start that Impala with whatever was going on, bad compression, head gasket issue, something that was trying to seize up the motor, uh, that drained my booster pack in a quick hurry. So thanks to the Impala, we won't get to try to crank over the range, man. I would really like to hear this thing at least crank over to see if the motor may... You know, maybe salvageable if he shot some starting fluid in it. Unfortunately, that's the way the cookie crumbles. I'm Bruce Nolan. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes another Copart walk around. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this has been the best Copart walk around I think I have been out here doing in, I can't even remember, uh, probably about forever. It has been so hot and so humid out here. It is just miserable doing these walk-arounds, but it's better than getting rained on, I think. I'm not sure. I don't know. What do you guys think? What's worse, hot and humid or getting soaked in torrential rains? Personally, I prefer a day like this where it's like 88, 89 degrees out, not sunny, fairly cloudy, nice little breeze coming through. You don't have to sweat that much. Makes doing these walk-arounds a hell of a lot more enjoyable for me. Puts me in a better mood, which hopefully puts you guys in a better mood. I actually had a great time today and I really do thank all of you for watching and joining us today. If you enjoyed the content, hit that thumbs up button. Let me know, let YouTube know you enjoyed the content as well. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hey man, just click that subscribe button. It takes like two seconds. Click the subscribe button. You can stay up to date on all of my future videos because we got lots and lots and lots of stuff coming. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram where you're going to see stuff happening long before you're ever going to see it on the channel. And that is Auto Auction Rebuilds with an S plural, Auto Auction Rebuilds on Facebook and Instagram. And with that, we are out of here, guys. Again, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe out there. I will catch you all very soon in the next one.